Welcome back to Rick Scale Model Fix and part two of our ongoing Airfix 170 second scale Buccaneer 2SB video build. So at the end of part one we managed to get the front section of the fuselage containing the cockpit all assembled, glued together and has indeed been sitting there drying ever since. So work now focuses on the main fuselage so we need to now decide on what options we're going to put on our kit and also whether we want our wings folded. Now Airfix have given a lovely diagram here saying to cut the green areas if you want the wings folded. We're going to have the wings deployed so that's not going to necessarily be too much of a problem for us but we have got to now decide on what sort of weaponry if any we have. So we've got a number of holes there to set up. So we've got the slipper tanks wanting to be opened up or the pylons for the bombs and other bits and pieces. So let's take a look at that. So I'm just going to remove this lower wing section from the runners. Just using a pair of cheap side cutters This one's right there, it is. And we're just going to clean this up, so we're just going to remove all these attachment points just very quickly with the blades cutters. Taking care not to pinch the plastic and make any filling work for us ourselves later. And then we can tidy up with a sanding stick or knife blade those remnants just to make everything disappear. Just remember, we keep saying about the importance of cleaning up. If you miss any of these, it will affect the fit of adjoining parts, which then pushes other critical areas of the build out. And before you know it, you're using a lot of filler to try and correct what you could have eliminated just by a bit of due diligence going around and cleaning everything up. we've got everything there. And while we've got this wing section, we've got some lovely detail and um, contained in the surface. So we've got some lovely Bombay detail there. And some raised panels and rivets. So all should look good under some paint. But let's deal with the task in hand and get some of these holes opened up. So I think what we'll do is we'll open all the holes which gives us the most flexible option and then if we don't need any we can simply fill them with heat stretch sprue later on in the build. So they're all labelled as one mil. So we're getting our twist drills. We can find our one mil drill and we're just going to open these up. So it might seem a bit extreme opening everything but it's really not a problem to uh, close them up again from the outside if needed. You just get uh, a wedge of heat stretch sprue, feed it into the hole, secure it with some glue, and cut it off it's flush with the surface of the fuse, the wing, and that's the repair done. Should that be the hole that you don't want to use, it's far easier to do that 
than to try and open a hole than you've missed. So there's two pretty close together there, so we might have to be doing the outside ones according to the instructions. So this one, according to our fix, is not opened at all, so just be careful with that. same ones on the other side and the old arthritis is kicking in so I'll just have to give that a pause for a second fingers a little bit. So that's all our holes open and then what we can do is just go onto the other side and we're just removing the raised portions now with a knife blade just to leave some nice flush holes that we now have the option of still fitting anything we want to the airframe without having to make a real decision And they are, like we said, easy enough to close up, should we wish not to use any. So the next stage in the build process sees us needing to get some internal structure to this fuselage and a little bit of painting. So we need part B12. So part B12 sits in this position and we'll worry about painting those engine faces later. So we're just checking the position of this and it does go in front of those beams. So I've got that at an angle. So it does go in like this. So let's get some glue in there. In, uh, in its place and secured. Just holding the parts while the glue dries. So again it's important that you make sure that this part has no remnants of the sprue gates on and that the fuselage contour matches the part inside otherwise we'll end up with warped wings or a fuselage that doesn't quite fit properly so we're making sure that everything's in its place and we're ready to move on to the next stage which is adding parts A8, A9 and B14 so we've added those internal parts in stages 15, 16 and we're on to stage 17 which is the full length intakes so it's at this point I think once we've got this main gear bay and these cross sections in it's a good idea to check that the upper fuselage section does fit and while the fit of the parts is not fantastic in this area it's not bad and it'll soon fill and sand beautifully I built one of these when it first came out and that's up in the site as a quick photo build so I think we'll leave it at that point and we'll move on and have a look at these intakes and the rear end and the jet cans and what have you 
So with the rest of the internals going in, it was time for some judicious use of clamps just to hold everything in place. And as you can see, we've got some there just clamping everything down and making sure everything is in perfect alignment. So we've just swapped sides with the clamps and now we're coming in and just making sure these joins are good. And there's a lot can be seen from inside that main gear bay as well. So with the main fuselage assembly left overnight it's time to just remove these clamps. So just get those out of the way. And let's have a look at what we've achieved. So we've got the bulkhead in that forms the inside of the main gear bay with those jet intakes or sections of trunking for the jet pipes. And it's time to start looking at getting some of the rest of these parts in which make up the rear end. Like so. And hopefully we're in a position then to get the top fuselage section on the model. And hopefully everything fits as it needs to without any sort of help or mass amount of filling. So we've added part C7 to the rear of the model and this is where the jet cans sit on the finished machine. Again we've had to use some clamps just to hold everything in place and pull everything into alignment and um, hopefully we've got some tape around there to pinch the sides in and then we've got some clamps to close everything up and we're just going to let the glue dry with that one just for an hour or two and hopefully what it'll do is it'll mean that this area that's a bit flexible on the model will in fact be supported and we'll end up with a good joint when we do come to put the top surface together. So we've got all the internals into the belly of the Buccaneer and we've took those clamps off. Unfortunately we've got quite a good fit of everything around the airframe. The only thing that I haven't done is attach the forward air intakes to their bulkhead and the reason for that is I just wanted to make sure that the seams inside here were sanded flush and smooth because there is a joint line down there just in case those FOD covers don't fit and that way we're not uh, sort of degrading the look of the model down the intakes if we don't use those. So all I've done is glued those together and then put a copious amount of Tamiya white top just along the lines and allowed that to dry and then what we'll do is we'll get some sandpaper on a paintbrush handle and we'll just work those seams once the glue has dried. All in all it's now a very very strong centre section and with a bit of care when we put this top surface on we're going to have no work to do other than a very small amount of Mr Surfacer to join the fuselage top and bottom sections together. The fit of the parts is really quite good and that's partly due no doubt to the care we've employed making sure everything lines up. So let's get these parts joined together. So we're just going to start on this side intake and we're just going to use Tamiya quick set extra thin and we're just going to put a good amount in there and just tease the joint together making sure that it does line up just taking our time getting the best fit we can and just moving on now to the leading edge of the wing holding everything in place. We don't want to put too much pressure on the parts that will then make them splay outwards. So we're just letting the glue do the work. And I can't even feel that seam. And it is a bit rough. There is a gap there and we need to just put a bit of surfacer in there. But 
it will take nothing more than that. Just coming down to the rear end and the area where the flap will sit. And again just bringing it together very gently not wanting to tease or splay the fit in any way just taking our time working on one side at once everything's looking good there so we're going to have minimal clean up so we just put a clamp on there just to keep that surface together it was a bit springy and the other side is as, is as bad so there's something in there that perhaps we could have just reduced the height slightly just to make the fit even better but it's nothing that's going to be too detrimental so we'll just let that glue bite so we're just holding these parts together now until the glue sets and then we can just finish off with this starboard side intake just to get that section of the build completed. So I'm just going to hold these parts while the glue does dry and then I'll join you back at the cutting mat once we're in a position to progress. So while we're waiting for that mid fuselage section to dry We've jumped ahead to stage 31 and we're going to join the tail end together and hopefully once the glue's dry on this centre section we can get this attached to that and we can check what the seam is like around that mid section before we get anything else on in the way if we do need to do any remedial work. Just a couple of holes to open up on the inside of these which we've done. Just set about gluing the portions together now. So we can do this from the inside just to make use of another mating surface. So I'll just push everything down. There were a few ejector pin marks that needed cleaning up just to get the perfect fit on this vertical tail and they were just removed with that Flory Models sanding sponge and just tease everything into place like so and then there's this part which sits on the inside which is going to be the mounting for the air brake I would imagine later on in the build and again, hopefully we can just drop some glue on the inside of that. And squeeze everything into position. I think Tamiya Quickset Extra Thin works well with the Airfix plastic. With the Airfix plastic being slightly soft, it does react well and you can get away with a little bit more than you could perhaps do with a harder type plastic and then there's just this piece in the centre so we'll just let the glue dry on this assembly and then we'll offer it up to the fuselage and see what type of fit we've got and whether we need to really be concerned about any remedial work. 
it's just unfortunate that I think Airfix to capture the shape of the Buccaneer it's difficult to do it in traditional sections so we're going to have a join here hopefully we can just disguise it as a panel line so with the rear end dry I offered that up to the fuselage and the fit was quite good so we've just used the Flory model sanding sticks and skinny sticks and sponges just to blend everything in around this area and it just needed a small amount of mist to filler just to hide the gaps completely so obviously time will tell as soon as we get a primer coat on there if we do need to do any more remedial work there's still quite a bit to do on the underside for the time being we're going to add the tail so it might be worth just thinking about what option you're going to do in terms of markings and if it was the wraparound camo it might be a good idea to just leave this off but um, I think we can get beyond that just to check if there are any fit issues because the last thing you want to be doing is correcting any fit issues well the model's painted so we're just going to add some glue to the undersurface and it's going to be critical to get this part aligned. Now the fit is really good, there is no joint or gaps there. So we're just going to offer it up to the cutting mat and we just need to make sure that it is 90 degrees. So I think we're fairly happy that that's in the correct location. So we'll just finish off adding the cement. let that dry for a second and then we've got the fin cap to add which doesn't look as though it really wants to fit too well there actually so we're going to have to have a look at this part and see see what gives it looks narrower than the top and it doesn't look right to me And then we've got the acorn fairing on the front. So there's our tail end on. There is going to be some remedial work to be done. The fit, the parts isn't fantastic, but everything's gone into place. And using a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, just to make things a little bit easier with it for the job for ourselves, we have got not too bad an alignment there. And everything looks good. So we'll set that to one side now for the glue to dry. So I've been plodding on with our booking here and it's starting to look uh, like some work's been done so we've added the outer wing panels quite straightforward nothing to report hence why there's no actual footage of me fitting these they are straightforward just dropping fit and the fit is perfect just again making sure everything lines up so again testament to airfix and also the fact that we probably clamped everything in place and got perfect alignment to this centre section back in the beginning of part two. Tails now added the rudder. I've just deflected it slightly. There's going to be a varying degree of artistic license with this. It was if we've got removed before flight tags and FOD covers on, then there would probably be a rudder lock and it would be in place and stuff like that. Airfix don't actually show you dropping the flaps but I've actually added those slightly dropped again just artistic license probably not 100% accurate underneath the arrestor hook recess has gone in a little bit of a fiddly fit it just needs a little bit more work just to blend that in and make it satisfactory and we've added that bulged 
one piece Bombay actually in the closed position there's no benefit from having it open and the model sat on its undercarriage you're not going to see in there anyway so why make work for yourself so pretty much this is the rear end now done and we need to just concentrate on getting the intakes on at the nose and getting that nose section added so we've now painted those intakes and added them to the model and it's now time to offer up the nose section so this is going to be a critical part of the build so we just need to make sure that it does go in and that it's straight and that everything does line up now I think our fixing their instructions would suggest that you add the outer intake shells first before you join the nose but it makes it for a very tight fit and if there was any discrepancy within these joints here it would make it a little bit more difficult sanding it so we're going to add this with a bit of super glue the fit is pretty good so if we can get it all lined up and then we'll save ourselves some more filler work later and we can get those intakes on and uh, So we're just going to use a bit of super glue just down on this lower edge and there is quite a lip so we're not going to go up with super glue in this area we're going to use a traditional uh, Tamiya liquid cement for that so let's get everything in alignment and a big push holding it all together making sure it's a perfect join which it is underneath and we'll just get that super glue to set a little bit of kicker maybe And there we have our nose section added to our model. So the fit is pretty good. So we're just going to get some Tamiya Extra Thin just along these gaps, along these joints. And that's actually taken care of those quite nicely, if you can see there. I don't think we're going to need to do anything really in the way of sanding or filling. Maybe just a little bit of sanding there just to bring that one in. And then going back to our super glue joint, we're just going to run a bead of Tamiya glue just to weld it shut. So that joint's going to need some Mr. Surfacer on, which we'll add now. And then we shall be leaving this to dry thoroughly before we add these outer intakes. But just as a dry fit, these are just going to slide on. The fit isn't terribly brilliant, but it's not terribly bad. With a bit of Mr. Surfacer and a bit of blending, everything will look good. It's in keeping with the rest of the panel lines and everything and we're there with our jet so everything is now complete so we need to think about protecting this cockpit area while we do this work so we'll have a look at putting the canopy on with a bit of PVA so that's going to draw a conclusion to part two of our Airfix 172nd scale Buccaneer 2SB video build hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen so far some helpful tips and hints about the kit and how to build this one. Skipped over the simpler items such as adding the wings and the tail section because there really wasn't anything to report that fits perfect and doesn't cause any issues there for the modeler whatsoever. The only dilemma I've now got is to whether I have the air brake in the open or closed position. 
I've got the one built up in the closed position that just slots in the end but it's such a characteristic trait of a Buccaneer it might be a shame to display it closed so let me know what you think in the comments below and uh, we'll see what we can come up with there is a bit of work needed to be done to the open air brake to make it look presentable well, it's nothing too major and it might be a nice little exercise to see what can be done with those parts so until part three everyone please take care stay well and look after yourselves mm -hmm.